Welcome to another edition of Pause for Thought with me, Greg. As we approach Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and ultimately Resurrection Day, as Christians, we're called to reflect on what it means to be a Christian. And to be a Christian is to have a relationship with God that is deep within the heart, to be guided and directed by the Holy Spirit and through God's Word, but also to emulate the kind of life and spiritual characteristics that Jesus demonstrated when he was on this earth in preparation for when he returns again, which I believe is not as far away as many would think. And so we have to get ready. Like the wise and foolish virgins, the wise had prepared with their lamps lit with spare oil, while the foolish had them lit but didn't have any spare. And while they went away to go and get some, the bridegroom, Jesus, returned and the door was locked. And the oil, in that context, represents the Holy Spirit. So we need to have more of Jesus in us and less of us. In Mark 1, verse 35, Jesus rose very early in the morning while it was still dark. He departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And we know from Scripture that Jesus prayed a lot. And if Jesus, who is the Son of God, prays a lot, then so should we. And why was he praying? He was communicating with his Heavenly Father not just for rejuvenation, because I'm sure that as he ministered to people, it would be like they sucked all the energy out of him and he would go to be rejuvenated and to be encouraged and to be strengthened, but also so that he knew the mind of God, so that he did nothing unless it was at the direction of the Lord Heavenly Father. Jesus said, I only do what the Father does, and I only say what the Father says. In 1 John 5, 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have towards him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And as Jesus was seeking the will of the Father, so should we. Now, I was looking at my screensaver uh, today and it came up with when it is too hard to stand kneel when it is too hard to stand kneel now many of us if we kneeled we probably wouldn't be able to get back up again but what it's saying is when it's difficult and a challenge seek the lord's face and pray without ceasing. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So is no in your life where the strength comes from, the encouragement, the peace, the answers, the direction. Hebrews 4.16 Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And we all go through regular times when we need the Lord's comfort, direction, strength, 
And how can we have that confidence to draw near the throne of grace? Remember, only through the blood of Jesus, only through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. There's that chasm between us and God because of sin, which was brought into creation through Adam and Eve's mistake and sin. Through the deception of the snake, Satan, the adversary, Lucifer, the angel of light, the light bearer, actually. And so we need to draw near to God. Remember the veil being torn in two gave us access through Jesus to our Heavenly Father so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And because we are sinners, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we need his mercy and his forgiveness. And the grace and the love is there when we need it. But it's not a shopping list. It's praying in line with the will of God, with the attitude that Jesus had. And allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us into a holy lifestyle. Why should a holy God listen to a sinful me? When I truly repent from the heart and seek to change my life and allow the Holy Spirit to transform me into the person that God created, then perhaps if I align myself with the word of God and with God's will, he may answer me. And it might be yes, it might be no, it might be not yet, it might be definitely not. James 5.13 says, Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. And sometimes the difficulties and challenges become too difficult to bear. We should tell the Father. We should share it with him. And remember that if we suffer, he suffered much more. And sometimes the suffering is through our own self-life, through idolatry, through wrong choices, through things which we've held on to and are slipping through our fingers and we are regretful or sad or we put our trust in that rather than our trust in the Lord. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praises. I don't think we sing praises often enough. And particularly down this pandemic when churches have been forbidden to have public worship and singing of hymns and songs, and that's been very difficult. But rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Recount all the things that we should be grateful for. And give thanks and praise and worship to our Heavenly Father. Doesn't mean to say we can't listen to worship music at home, sing at home, because we can. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. This is a scripture that I have sought to be obedient to in my ministry and in my life. And people have called upon me as an elder of the church, together with others, 
We've prayed, anointed with oil, in the name of Jesus. Some people have been miraculously healed. Others have been spiritually healed. Others have passed and died. But all the turmoil and all the angst and all the fear has gone. The prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. Because after all, the most important thing in our lives, for, for above everything, is our salvation and whether we will be in heaven with the Lord forever. And whether the Lord saves the one who is sick. Sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes people give their lives to the Lord when they're desperately sick. And they find what they've been looking for. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he's committed sins, he will be forgiven. Because, of course, to enter through the narrow way, is to repent of our sins to seek the Lord with all our heart and soul and strength and mind invite Jesus as Lord into our hearts and by the power of the Holy Spirit allow God to reign in our lives. It then goes on, still in James 5, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And sometimes it's our sin and our unforgiveness, our unrepentance, our anger, resentfulness and hate that builds and builds because we have this cancerous lump of sin within our lives. Scripture says that if you have anything against your brother and sister before taking communion, put down your gift, go and sort it out with them before taking communion, because some people have taken communion wrongly, with wrong intent, and not valued the sacrifice of Jesus, have done it with a, an impure heart or impure motives. And some have been fallen sick, and others have even died. Continues, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And we're only made right, righteous, with God through the blood of Jesus. Through denying self, taking up our cross and following the Lord. It's not us who are doing a magic trick. It's not us who are bringing healing. It's not us that are bringing forgiveness. We are standing in the gap with the mind of Christ to allow God to do what he wants to do. Because God gives us free will. We can't pray against somebody's will. And it gives an example here. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Simple. But he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. And we know that he became one of the great prophets with the challenge of the prophets of Baal when God answered with fire from heaven
Now, it wasn't because he was a magician or had special powers. He did what God told him to do. And he trusted without wavering because the Lord he knew was faithful and true and not a man that he should lie. And as God was demonstrating, there is no other God other than him against the prophets of Baal and Jezebel and weak King Ahab and the terribleness they brought on Israel. He found a man, Elijah, who through free will yielded himself to the Lord and said, okay, here I am, send me. And God was able to work through him to both speak God's word and to say, well, you know, God has instructed me to do this, so this is what I'm going to do. It, do. And incredible things happened. One John three verse twenty two says, "Whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him." Being righteous. James 4.3, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. We filter it through our own needs and wants and desires. Romans 12.12 12 says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation, but be constant in prayer. In my life, I found when there have been major challenges and everything else has fallen apart and everybody else has left, the Lord has always been faithful. He's always been there. And he's always promised he will never leave me or forsake me. So I can rejoice in the hope that is set before me. That eventually all this difficulty and challenge and life, which is not a bed of roses, or it may be with the sharp bits, there is hope of eternal salvation. So that I can be patient in tribulation. You know, and the Lord doesn't say that we won't have difficulties and challenges but it's how we come through those difficulty and challenges which builds our faith, builds backbone and character by being constant in prayer. And then Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Because as we're refined, and as we become more like Jesus and less sinful, because we're more servant-like and more repentant, more loving and more forgiving and more obedient and teachable, we pray in line with God's will. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Amen. So, when it's too hard to stand, kneel. So till next time, it's a big God bless you from me, Greg. Bye.